Sorry about the echo, guys. Oh, I forgot I needed to turn my volume down on the computer here. Oh. <laughs> Katie says, wow, a snow photo. What's the hurry? Relax. Enjoy your fall. That was snow from, from this past year. <laughs> I figure we've got a month to make some preparations because We've been told it may be a hard winter. Uh, oh my goodness. My goodness gracious. Oh, Mary, uh, are you getting audio okay? Sounds good, on my phone. Sounds good now. Echo's taken care of. Yay. Thank you. What are you what are you cooking? It smells good. Yeah, we, we don't eat the Z vegetable. We don't even mention the, the, the name of the Z vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah, that aloe plant was, was pretty torn up whenever I, I got to it. It had gotten knocked out of its of its container, and all the roots were knocked off of it. So I took some some hazelnut husks and put them in a cup, and put some water in there, and then put the entire plant around there and surrounded it with those those waterlogged hazelnut husks, and then kept it under a grow light in the grow tent over here to the to the side of me for a few months. And eventually, it started to develop its new roots. And then, whenever spring came around, I moved it outside, and it's been growing outside ever since. Hello, Eric Hale. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. We're going to do some more stuff like that here in the near future. I especially need to do irrigation along this uh, the strip where that aloe plant came out of. But I'm probably going to, to do it with uh, maybe a maybe a four inch PVC pipe, and I'll, I'll Either I'll get um, that drainage tile pipe that already has the preparations in it, or I'll, I'll perforate it myself and then put an elbow up in there so I can fill it, and then it'll all be submerged under the under the mulch there. I got Ginger Ola Aver saying hello, Daddy. Uh, is that Ginger or is it Jessica using? Or is it is it Ginger or Jessica using your mom's account? Out of curiosity, probably Ginger. They both call me Daddy. It can get confusing. <laughs> but hi, hi, how are you guys doing? I I just did a rush job on editing this clip before we got started. It's that doesn't help. <laughs> You're both redheads. <laughs> All right, let me stop that share. There we go. Hello, everyone. Oh, oh, oh! How are things up there in Pennsylvania? Are you guys staying cool enough? Boy. All right. So here's the here's the uh, the aloe that we brought in. I might have up to a month to get it in, but you never know. I, I don't want to lose it because it's the only aloe plant I have. Wait, let's put it back over here. Just have to make sure the cat get, doesn't get to it because cats love to love to nest in aloe plants. They're weird like that. All right, you guys are doing really good up there. All right. Uh, let me see. Eric says, so you got a place to get free wood chips or compost to put in your battery? I do. Uh, uh, at least wood chips. Compost, I could. Um, 
I could get some uh, some manure from my cousin John and have him bring it up, or I could go down there and pick it up one of the two, and a truckload of manure. But he does uh, he does spray some uh, some herbicides to control pigweed and and Canadian thistle. So depending upon how well the, how those would interact with uh, my my plants, especially once I get started growing artichokes, because I do intend to grow a type of thistle. <clears throat> so something would kill thistles might not get, be good for my artichokes. So I'm, I get it, but I'm not sure I want it. <laughs> but I can get all the wood mulch I want from the, the Green Waste facility in Tulsa. It's here in Green Country. Yay. <laughs> Hello, Vicky. Ginger says, guys, if you need to come visit, we got lots of room. I'll, I'll tell Mary to stop by and visit you whenever she's up in Pennsylvania. She makes her makes her way up to the Northeast periodically. I might come along too, who knows. Uh, let's see, what about indoor versus outdoor in winter? I'm gonna do some more indoor growing. Uh, I've learned some things about growing indoors with a grow tent this past year. Uh, it's a learning experience, it's a bit of a curve. Uh, I need to make sure that I've got my lights down a lot lower and closer to the plants early on. And then as they, they develop, I can bring the lights up. But I think one of the problems I had early on was that the plants weren't getting enough light early. So I've got more grow lights that I can employ. Mary wants me to relocate the grow tent to a different location. Uh, I don't know exactly where we're going to put it. We've got a wood stove over here that we're in the midst of hooking up, which is yet another one of the preparation for winter tasks that we're in the midst of doing. Uh, I don't have all the footage from that just yet because we are really in the middle of doing it. I've got, uh, let's see, today we, we hooked up the, the the brackets on the outside. So we have the, the wall, the wall straps, the little bands that go around the pipe on the outside of the wall that keep them up and away from the edge of the roof and hold it in place whenever it gets windy out. Um, we're doing that. I have to make another trip to the to the store to get some self-tapping sheet metal screws to fasten our pieces of stovepipe together so they don't come loose. Uh, we're using four pieces of four lengths of stovepipe from the from the from the joint from the elbow where it comes up. It comes up from the, the pass through, which is an insulated pipe, and it's got a reducer here, and then it's going to come straight up. Four stovepipe links, and those are being held by brackets onto the the outer wall. And I'll put the chimney cap on the top of that, and then we'll be ready to to survive the winter. By golly, even if we we wind up losing power and gas and everything else. Um, Vicky's saying I've been given to understand that thistles are entirely edible. Well, maybe not the stickers. I don't know. I mean, artichokes are a type of thistle. They just have a really big flower head, and you eat the flower head before it opens. So, in theory, yeah, you could you could get other types of thistle and get them and eat that unopened flower bud just like an artichoke. How much of the meat you would have on it would be a, a good question to ask. But you know, there, we've got wild thistles growing out there that come spring I can go I can go have a look at and see how see how edible they wind up being. Probably get away with that. All right, how many people we have in here? We got five people, that's a few. If folks could just type in the area of the country that you happen to be in, I've got, I've got the old farmer's almanac for 2022 here, and we can have a look and see what they're telling us about your, about your upcoming winter. I'll go ahead and start with mine. We're in the Texas, Oklahoma region. Texas, Oklahoma region. It says here, <clears throat> winter will be colder than normal. Oh joy. Especially in the south, with the coldest periods in mid to late November, mid and late December, and early and late January. Okay. January, February. Usually February is our, our, our coldest, or at least our most frozen month here in northeastern Oklahoma. But it looks like we're going to get it a little bit earlier, so it might stretch a little bit longer. Who knows? All right. Let's see. April and May will be warmer than normal, with rainfall below normal in the north. That's where I'm at. So I can expect a little bit less rain early in the spring with rainfall below normal in the north and above normal in the south. Summer will be hotter than normal with the hottest periods in late June and from mid-July into mid-August. That's about par for the course. Hotter than normal doesn't sound good. 
right. rainfall will be slightly above normal in the north. Yay! Okay, at least we'll get more rainfall next summer. And below normal in the south. Watch for a tropical storm in mid to late June. September and October will be warmer and drier than normal. So, oh joy. That's the kind of winter I've got coming up. Let's see. Um, yeah, I've got a spark arrestor for it. Uh, Drops was asking if I got a spark arrestor. I've got a spark arrestor. Uh, let me see. Vicky said, Vicky said, I have my driveway and initial flat space in. Oh, good. All right. You'll have to text me a, a, the address and we, we can come out and or phone calls and work out when and where and we can meet up and then drive in and, and, and go walk the walk the space. I do need to take a couple of days off and bug bomb the house. So I might be bringing a cat with me. <laughs> the cat hasn't had a hasn't had a road trip in a while. Well, I need to I need to lock up the house and uh, and and drop some bombs in it once it starts to get a little bit chilly out. Let the bugs come in, and finally we can just get rid of them. I'm tired of them crawling across the the computer screen while I'm trying to do a live stream. It just looks unprofessional <clears throat> and a little gross. All right. Oh wow, wow. Vicky's place sounds amazing, but that's a really nice place that she's at. It's it's up there in the uh, the northwestern corner of Arkansas, just a little south of uh, Bull Shoals Lake. A hop, skip, and a jump from the Mark Twain National Forest, which is also gorgeous. And there's just all kinds of wonderful wild edibles out there, and lots of possibilities for uh, for for terraforming and agroforestry in that in that region. And so she's she's going to be set up really nice. All right, John Puffrey is in northern Kentucky. Let's have a look. All right. What's going on in Northern Kentucky? Let's, let's, uh, let's see. Winter. Let's see. Hang on. That's no, no, no. That's 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 the Northeast I'm looking at. Oops. I don't want to give you that one. That that, that, that make it just lose hope. There's Atlanta, Jenner, Raleigh, Columbia, uh, Harrisburg, Frederick, Roanoke, Asheville. That's that's right around there, right? Appalachians. Lower Lakes, Ohio Valley, Deep South. That's Tennessee, Alabama. All right, make sure I get this. Make sure I get this, this area right. Otherwise, I'll tell you the wrong thing. Alaska, Hawaii, really? Okay. All right, so here we go. Huh? Who's in Cincinnati? Oh, oh, he's in Northern Kentucky. Okay. Oh, yeah, Northern Kentucky. Okay. Uh, let's see. Asheville's Tennessee. Roanoke's Virginia. Harrisburg's Pennsylvania. Where is Kentucky in here? It's hiding from me. Ah. Uh, all right. Hang on. Oh, here. This 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 map might help, right? All right. <laughs> that might help a little bit. Okay, it's zone number seven, and you're close to Ohio. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Not zone seven is an agricultural zone. It's just that they, they split the, the country. Okay, Ohio Valley region. There you go. There we go. That's where you're at. All right. Here we go. It says winter will be colder than normal with below normal precipitation. So it's going to be cold and dry. But above normal snowfall, especially in the West, the coldest periods will be mid to late November, and through much of the period from mid-December through January. So you're going to get your cold early on. Early on, you're going to get hit. So have your firewood stacked up and ready to go. Uh, the snowiest periods will arrive in mid-December, early and what's it, early in mid-January, and mid to late February. You guys are getting snow. I'm jealous. We're not going to get much, I don't think. We might get some ice out here in, in northeastern Oklahoma. All right. Summer. When you get to it, will be slightly cooler and drier than normal in the east with above normal temperatures and rainfall in the west. The hottest periods will be in late June, early to mid-July, and early August. September and October will be warmer than normal with normal precipitation. All right. So that Ohio Valley area is covering, uh, oh, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, through Cincinnati, Charleston, Louisville, all the way down to, uh, what is that, the, the, is that Missouri over here on the other side of Kentucky? Yep, that is. Yep, like the, the, the far southeastern corner of Missouri. 
All right, so that's what you guys have to look forward to. Uh, Southwest Indiana for Eric Hale. All right, Eric, let's have a look. You're also in the Ohio River Valley area, so you guys are going get, to be getting the same the same forecast. Chris is clever. Craft says, "Hey, Jason. Hi, Chris. How you doing?" Kitty, kitty, not any kind of problem. All right, all right. I can bring my cat. Yay! 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 Depending upon when you come out, I might, I might bring some fig trees. Because one of our, one of our other subscribers, uh, Lisa Kukla, stopped by yesterday. We had a great visit. She's been doing some, some work for um, the lady that she is leasing space from until she gets her own, her own acreage. Um, and part of the job that she's been doing is helping to eradicate a fig tree that the, the property owner doesn't want. And this thing has got a huge root ball. It's about five feet across. It's been growing here in Northeastern Oklahoma for about 20 years or so. And it survives the winter, unlike the figs that I got from the local box store. So she brought by, I think, at least a dozen of them. And uh, we're going we're gonna to try to grow and propagate some of those. So we've got a fig that can survive an Oklahoma winter. That's impressive because they hit us really hard. It gets cold here and it's hard on figs usually. And uh, let's see. Anybody who's just coming in, drop in your location if you like. I've got the almanac here. We're going to look up and see what kind of winter the farmer's almanac says that you can expect. Of course, Vicki, I know where you're at. Yep. You're in. You're in the Heartland. Heartland is. Let's see here. Heartland is a uh, Iowa, all of Iowa, pretty much all of Missouri except for that little corner that's in uh, that's in the Ohio Valley, the the eastern half of Kansas and the eastern half of Nebraska. All right, so here we go. The winter you can expect out there is. Colder and drier than normal. See, everybody's getting colder than normal winters this year. Yeah, and, and the old farmer's almanac has been doing this for a couple hundred years. They cover everything, including uh, solar activity and the positions of the planets. I know we've talked about this before, but the positions of the planet have a direct effect on weather here on Earth because they have tidal effects on the sun. Those tidal effects affect solar activity. So, and solar activity is the thing that drives climate change on Earth, by the way, in case you didn't know. All right. So here we go. Colder and drier than normal on average with the coldest periods in mid to late December, early and late January and early to mid February. Sounds about normal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, snowfall with below normal in the north and above normal in central and southern areas. So you might get some snow this year. That could be fun. I mean, snowfall in the Ozarks is, is, is it makes it look pretty when you get it. If you get, if you get it and you, you've got a nice, a nice, uh, Nice, nice snow coat. You're out there and you're, you're, you're looking across. And you've got pines in the, if you're fortunate enough not to be stuck with a whole bunch of eastern eastern cedar. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Arkansas has more pine than cedar. Um, it just makes it look really, 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 really pretty out there. All right. Whenever I lived in that region, I didn't get a whole lot of, 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 of snowy winters. It was a lot of just cold and nastiness. A couple, couple years we got a little bit of snow. All right. Snowy spirits, late December, early January, mid-February. April and May will be warmer and drier than normal. So that's not good. But Nikki's got a, got plenty of water on the property. And you're going to have some snow. So you can capture that melt water runoff. Summer will be hotter and rainier than normal. Well, at least you get the rain. With the hottest periods in early and late June and early to mid-July. September and October will be only slightly in rainier than normal. So you're going to get rain all the way through in the Heartland region for summer. That's good news. All right. Vicki says, I'll send contact info after the last year. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, you've, you've got a considerable acreage with some changes in elevation and different things going on for you. Uh, Katie is 6B, Western Side, very Southern Illinois. Okay, Western Side, very Southern Illinois is 
Well, Western Siberia, Southern Illinois is probably going to be heartland too. Also, uh, also Katie. So that same forecast applies to you as well. Wouldn't turn down fig trees. Hey, the more the merrier. Okay, Chris is in Eastern Colorado and Eastern to Mid Colorado. All right, let me see here. Colorado, Colorado, Colorado. Where are you? Okay, and on the eastern side, that's a big, wide area, like the the, the Western Plains area. And they've got this marked as basically around number twelve. How much you want to bet colder than normal? All right, here we go. High Plains area. This is the High Plains area. For people who don't live in the Plains, we have interesting weather patterns. His is a little bit different, but not much from ours. Winter can wind up with some really serious Arctic temperatures during, during the course of the winter, but the rest of the time, it's just fine. It's just occasionally you get those Arctic blasts and things that can't handle it die. It kind of limits what we can grow. All right, so winter will be milder than normal. Hey, you get milder than normal winter? Lucky. With the coldest periods in mid to late November, late December, early and mid to late January. All right, so you're going to get hit with a little bit of cold early, but it's going to be milder than normal. Precipitation will be near to slightly above normal with snowfall above normal in the north and below normal in the south. Okay, so. The north is, of course, uh, North Dakota, Western North Dakota, uh, Eastern Montana, and the south goes all the way down to the Panhandle with uh, with Texas and New Mexico or around Amarillo or so. That's all high plains area. All right. April and May will be warmer and drier than normal. Summer will be hotter than normal. With the hottest periods in mid-June throughout the first half of July. The season will be drier than normal in the north and rainier than normal in the south. September and October will be warmer and slightly drier than normal. So I guess for, for folks for folks in the western high plains area and probably out west, I'm gonna I'm gonna just anticipate take a wild guess. I haven't read the part yet, but I'm gonna guess you guys are gonna get more of the same, lots of dryness whenever summer rolls around. So start stocking up on your on your water catchment early on. Capture water whenever you can, because you may wind up needing it. Oh yeah. H wit nine nine thousand says hello from the Cumberland Plateau. Ooh, Cumberland Plateau is uh, da, 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 in Central Tennessee. Central Tennessee over here, area number eight. Otherwise known as the Deep South. Of course, that includes lower half of Arkansas, almost all of Tennessee, uh, all of Mississippi, all of Alabama, all, all of Alabama. I cannot talk. Uh, Alabama. Portion of the of the Florida Panhandle, Louisiana, and this is what you can expect for winter this year. Ice storms expected in November. I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. But it does say <laughs> winter will be colder than normal. I don't know what that means. Sometimes that means you do get ice storms. <laughs> Sometimes that means, ooh, it's a little chilly. All right. Let me see. On average, okay, colder than normal on average with the coldest periods in mid to no, in mid December, sorry, and mid to late January. So you're gonna get you're gonna get the usual uh, the usual fall season. So enjoy it. Grow it. <laughs> You're safe to you're safe to plant and grow until probably December or so for your fall crops. So get them in, get them in, get them in. Um, early and mid February rainfall will be near normal in the north and above normal in the south, with the best threats for snow in the north from late December into early January and mid to late January. April and May will be much warmer than normal with below normal rainfall. So once again, take advantage of the rain whenever you get it. Summer will be hotter and rainier than normal, so hot, but at least you're going to get some water to go with it. Hottest periods in late June, early July, mid August. Uh, yeah, I've been in, I've been in that part of the country there in that time of year with that kind of weather. It's no fun. So you guys, you live there, you know what you're expecting. Steam bath. Uh, let's see, hottest periods late June, early July, mid August. Watch for a tropical storm in mid to late July. September and October will bring near normal temperatures. And be rainier than normal. And then maybe a tropical storm in late October. Fun, fun for the people on the Florida Panhandle and, and Alabama's coast area. 
keep an eye out for those tropical depressions as we get to that part of the year. Eric says, I'm just hoping for a record late frost. My late plenty of corn will finish. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, I didn't get the opportunity to, to, to try two plantings of corn this year, mainly because I was lazy and didn't apply myself. And the other reason is I didn't really have enough seed to, to, to do it. It would be a gamble in any case. And I don't want to take the only seed that I have and gamble with it. So I'm holding on to the seed corn I've got and I'll, I'll plant it in the spring. And hopefully I'll have enough for a, for a second planting. And then we can start really cranking out the, the heirloom Indian corn and start shipping out to people so you can have a good, reliable corn that's not suffering from genetic, genetic depression, genetic embryonic depression. All right. Uh, Drops is saying, I will be 100 miles northeast of Lubbock, Texas by the end of October. Awesome. All right. So the Texas, Oklahoma area, I think I already read this off, but... Uh, if you weren't here before, drops. It's uh, winter's going to be colder than normal, um, especially in the south. So kind of a repeat of, of this past year. Uh, colder than normal. Uh, coldest periods late November, mid and late December, early and late January. So make sure you've got uh, a way to keep yourself warm. Extra blankets and stuff like that. You're coming from the Pacific Northwest, so... You've, you've got the, the know-how to handle a cold winter. Just kind of expect that you're dragging it with you and your neighbors are going to look at you funny. <laughs> like, hey, this guy came down from the Pacific Northwest. He brought there with her with him. All right. Vicky's saying, snow looks pretty, but not to drive through. Ice storms are much, much, much worse for traveling. Yes, yeah. And if you're in the Ozarks, it's it's you get one of those nice... Ice ice coats over the road, followed by snow, with the the switchbacks and the the ravines that are right there at the shoulder. I wouldn't drive if I could help it. <laughs> Just stay home, stay home, don't travel. All right, let me see here. Vicky says, "Cold winter isn't necessarily fun, but good for reducing fleas, ticks, chiggers, and other pests." Amen to that. Chris is always catching water. Good man, good man. Vicky has uh, drops. Vicky has several wet springs. She's she's quite blessed. All right, let me see here. Mm -hmm. All right. You got the big buddy heaters. Yep, bring them with you. You might need them. Let's see. <laughs> Vicky has more than enough deadfall to keep her warm for years. Years and years and years. Whenever I get that sycamore tree down over there on the next lot over, there's going to be at least a year's worth of firewood in that thing. If I want to burn sycamore. I don't know if I want to burn all sycamore. Okay, so that's everybody that's reported in so far. I haven't read a report for... Um, for the Pacific Northwest or for California, for the mountains and desert areas, the far north or the east. But Farmer's Almanac comes out and it tells, it tells us this year for most of us, much, much colder the temperatures this year than we're used to. So be prepared, be prepared. That means, that means, that means by the time your first frost gets in and maybe a couple of weeks ahead, Go ahead and bring in, if you've got them, your 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 plants that are not frost tender, the ones that you're going to be overrunning, like this aloe plant here. Oy. If you've got uh, plants like ginger and turmeric for the people in the northernmost areas, ginger, turmeric, and uh, things like canna lilies, go ahead and get your, your peat moss moistened up. Get your, your uh, containers ready to put that peat moss in and get those packed in before your frost hits, go ahead, cut them off, get them packed in the peat moss so they stay hydrated and you can keep your roots throughout the winter. Ginger, turmeric, and cantaloupe is all those. If you're zone six and north, you're gonna wanna get them in. And of course, if you're here, well, I think probably zone nine and north, your turmeric and ginger should be brought in, packed in the peat moss. Make sure it's good and moist, not soaking wet, but good and moist. And then seal it up and keep it someplace 
someplace nice and dry, or what am I saying? Nice and fairly constant temperature throughout the winter. Don't let it freeze. Vicky says it can at least nine watercress springs. Wow. That's so nice. It's very nice. Of course, make sure you got your wood. If you're if you're if you're using wood heat or plenty of fuel for other sources of heat, make sure you have a backup in case your your usual method of keeping yourself warm goes out. Microfiber blankets are wonderful, incidentally. If you've got one or two layers of those and nothing else is working, you can always wrap up in those and Use your body heat to stay warm. Uh, How to Garden says, hello, Jason. Hello, How to Garden. HWIT 9000 says, I use rain catchment as my main source of water in my off-grid cabin. Any excess flows into my pond. Good, good, good. Peppers are great to bring in as well, says Eric. Oh, yeah, you can you can overwinter peppers. They're, they're, they're technically perennials, so as long as you can keep them from, from getting frostbit. You can bring them in and overwinter them and they can even continue to grow during the winter, put a grow light on them. Uh, wrap a, wrap an area, wrap a, a cabinet with, use this Mylar space blanket material here to wrap a uh, uh, metal shelf or something like that up with, keep it, Surround it, put your grow lights over the top. You can put your peppers in there. You can even bring in okra plants, and okra plants will overwinter that way. The same way, uh, although okra usually gets a little bit big. So if you've got a, a smaller okra plant, maybe you can bring it in and grow it indoors as a perennial. They are also technically, technically perennials. All right. All right. Let's see here. Katie is saying, geologically, I'm located in the Ozarks. Hmm. Ozarks involved Louisiana at one time. I usually think of the Ozarks as being that portion that had the um, the eroded plateau feature, karst, karst landscape underneath the eroded plateau, which includes portions of northeastern Oklahoma and uh, southwestern Missouri and northwestern Arkansas. That's what I think of the Ozarks as being that region. Red says, hey, good day, fella. Hello, Red. All right. <laughs> Vicky says, I've seen peppers use as roadside shrubs in Arizona. <laughs> yep. All righty. So what's everybody up to out there? What are you guys doing to get ready for the coming winter? Anything special? Mary got me some uh, Mr. Buddy heaters that run, that can run off of protein, propane, and she got adapters so I can use my big tank on them. I don't know if I'm actually going to use them, but it's nice to have that as a as a reserve just in case. Hmm. Now would be a good time to think about getting some plastic sheeting and uh, staples and a staple gun if you don't already have one, so you can you can put some plastic up around your windows. That's always a nice thing to do whenever it gets cold out, give you a little bit of extra insulation around the windows. You got a couple of weeks left to, to do some things around the house, do extra caulking and insulation if you, if you have the time and, it, and money to do that sort of thing. I know money's tight for a lot of people right now. John's just keeping some of the plants alive. See. Drop says, put the big tank outside. Oh, I, I, I've got that size big tank. I don't have a really big tank. It's the, the one that you attach to a, to a gas grill. But yeah, you can use that refill adapter from those and fill up your small tanks. Incidentally, oh, Mary, Mary. Hey, Mary. Oh, Mary. Mary, Mary, Mary. Hello. You're in the bathroom. Oh, she's in the bathroom. That reminded me of something. I, hold that thought. I'll be gone for two seconds. The, the thing I'm looking for is right on the shelf over here. I'll be right back.
you can also get one of these if you're so inclined. This is a this is an adapter that goes on the little five pound propane tanks. You, you screw it up here, and it's used to refill the the reservoir in uh, well, airsoft guns, All right? But it just so happens that this little nipple here at the top, when you put an airline tubing on it, you can take the other end of the airline tubing and use a, a Bic lighter. Take the top off the Bic lighter and open it up all the way. This is a Bic lighter that's already been exhausted. There's no more fuel left in it. Put the other end of the airline tubing over the, the vent where the gas comes out on the Bic lighter. Hold it down and fill your Bic lighter with protein. <laughs> with propane, I can't talk. Fill the big lighter with propane. So you can use a five pound Coleman fuel propane can to refill a cigarette lighter. Isn't that crazy? So one of these lets you do that. I, I heard from a guy that was in um, was in Bosnia back during the troubles in the 90s, whenever the city he was in was besieged. One of the ways that he was able to make a little extra a little extra barter and, and, and trade capital on the side was refilling lighters with a device just like this. Something to think about. All right. Let's see. What are we up to? He says she's transferring a messy compost area into a three bin area made of pallets. Which compost can contained so it's easier to easier to manage it's nice let's see chris actually uses one inch thick foil foam insulation stuff in his windows that sounds good <laughs> eric says i thought about getting one of those tent wood burning stoves and run it out a window i saw a few people doing it okay guys if you're going to be using any kind of um fire for heat indoors, make sure you've got a carbon monoxide detector and it's functioning and it works properly. So you don't wake up dead because these things happen, especially if you're in an area that is expecting colder weather than usual this winter. Um, don't be one of those people that didn't, didn't make any preparations for it and at the last minute goes and turns on their oven and then goes to sleep. This is how, this is how, People wind up in the newspapers. All right. Yeah. Nifty. Oh, I, I got it. I, I was going to ask you to go over to the, to, to the shelf and grab yeah, this thing. Is. And then somebody gets in the water. Out of the bowling ring. <laughs> All, right. All right. Red Sing has every tea wine. No, I've never made wine out of tea. But it's kind of like, I imagine it'd be kind of like kombucha. Well, kombucha would be you, you convert your, your 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 sweetened tea into alcohol, and then as that goes on, the the acetobacter that are also in the, the the social culture of bacteria and yeast, scopy, turns that into into vinegar. So you're in the midst of converting sugar to alcohol and alcohol to vinegar. That's what kombucha is anyway. I don't know. I'd rather just have vinegar or wine. <laughs> Vicky says, I'm doing what I can to stock up on seeds, nursery stock, tools and supplies, including pots, trays, and reference work. Hey, reference works are a wonderful thing to stock up on because if you've got it written down in hard copy and the power goes out and it doesn't come back on for some reason, then you've got it and you can still look up what you need to look up. Hard copy is king, folks. Hard copy is king. All right. Drop says, I got 25 pounds of heirloom seeds. I'm good. No, you need more. <laughs> more. Actually, 25 pounds is quite a bit. As long as a, a variety of different things, that's quite a bit. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Vicky. Vicky had some blood clots from... I'm presuming this is going back to the to the accident before you started the started the move. That's not fun. 
John Pomfrey says, free in plastic windows. Let's see. Jeff says the buddies have, have that. Oh, the the, uh, the the carbon monoxide detector already built into them. Okay, I haven't actually taken them out of taken them out of the box yet. Hey, Mary, what? where are the Mister Buddy heaters? In the purple room. They're in the purple room. Yeah. Could, could you throw me one, pretty please? We'll have a look at it. Drops is saying they have they have CO CO detectors already on them. I've got a I've got an electric powered CO detector in the in the kitchen that actually I don't know if it works properly yet or not. So I need. To, I need to do a test on it and make sure. Follow my own advice. She'll bring it over here in a minute. We'll, we'll have a look. I don't have uh, fresh arrivals in the, in the mail to open up, so we'll, we'll, we'll open up a Mr. Buddy heater and see what's in there. Ah. Because Chris was asking, is a buddy heater a Coleman? I'm not sure. You can use the Coleman fuel on them. Uh, <laughs> Drop says, I'm not a seed addict. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I can't help it. I have to. I have to. Yeah, she had to get dressed. Okay. So, so we've got two of these? Okay. This is a portable. Look at this portable buddy heater here, four thousand to nine thousand BTUs. It gets warm. Ah, look at that! I actually didn't get that for you. You didn't get this one for me. I got it for your plants. Oh yes. Just in case. Oh yes. Your plants going. There we go. Yeah, because I've been using electric and. Well, What's you know, the first thing to go out in our house? The electric. Yep. Well, <laughs> I've got. I've, okay, so I could use the I could use the generator to keep the grow lights going, and then either use this or the wood stove to keep the heat up. Right. Right. The wood stove only is in here. That's why I said. And then we've got yeah. and then we've got uh we've got okay. more of these. Yeah, I've got my knife here. Okay. We got more of these uh humidifiers so I can keep so I can keep the uh the plants nice and humidified whenever they're inside the grow tents. Where did you want me to move the uh the grow tent to? Uh, instead of instead of furniture. instead of where it is. I know we need to move this furniture so we can get the last of this old carpet out from underneath here. Oh, which means that. we'll probably have a change of scenery coming up. It in might be in the near future. We still have to recover right. from, this, from my time off, quote unquote. All right. Oh, yeah. Mary has been here for how many days now? Since Saturday? It's Saturday. Saturday. Afternoon. Sunday, Sunday Monday, Monday, Tuesday. Went four days. Four days. Because her truck, not, broke down, not exactly yeah. broken down, but the AC unit was out. And. Yeah. She can always drive with windows down, but whenever whenever you're going and many years really, whenever you're you're going and you're making deliveries, sometimes you have to sit and, park and and be parked for extended periods of time, and whenever the heat hasn't broken in some parts of the country yet, that could be a problem. So her truck's in the shop, but the part that they need to fix it is on back order and won't be arriving for at least another week. And then the big windshield is like a. Like a so, yay, imagine this. Yeah, supply chain breakdowns are a real thing. They're affecting the ability of truck drivers to operate the machines that they need to carry the rest of the supplies to supply the rest of the supply chain. This is getting bad out there, folks. All right, let's have a look at this guy. Boy, 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 boy. Here, bone. Oh, oh, it's got a handle. Oh, okay, it's not too heavy. Not too heavy. People use these a lot for camping. I've There's seen them on tiny houses, van lifers. We have a small house, and I live in a semi. So. You have some cardboard scrap for your worm farm or cricket farm. <laughs> I might try cricket farming one of these days. Oh, we had a bug. Give me something to feed to my fish. All right, uh, so you have the handle on the top. That's cool. Did you say these No, I threw them away. What? <laughs> They're right here. The instruction book is, comes with it. It's pretty big. All right. So you got a grill here to keep you from bumping into the little the little heater element there. I, I'm I'm thinking it, this one just sort of glows red hot and it doesn't actually have an open flame, which is nice. All right. And there on the side, this is the spot where you would plug your 
your Coleman fuel tank. So if you have those regular little, little green Coleman camp, camp fuel cans, you plug that right in there and it runs off of those. So there we go. Get your controls up here. Uh, I don't see uh, I don't see a carbon monoxide detector built into here. Well, there's two sides of it, apparently. Okay, so this one does not have the built-in CO detector. No, no built-in CO detector. So have a separate CO detector if you've got one of these small ones. And you know, wood stove too might be a good idea to have your your CO detector just in case. Just in case. And she said you, you've got adapters that'll let me hook up to, to this thing with the with you the big can order with the big off tank. Amazon should give you recommendations. Right. And a lot of the van lifers are saying and campers are saying you probably want like, the screws in as a hose and then yeah. it goes to your big tank. Yeah. So I've got the big tank for my for my flamer, my flame weeder. So I can use that in conjunction with one of these. And we have a couple of these. Stay warm in the winter, especially whenever it's colder than anticipated. Especially for you guys down there in in Texas, South Texas in particular, you got you got a little uh, wake up call this past year. The the almanac I just read it, Gales. I saw you come in, uh, Gail. I I read in the almanac this year they're anticipating colder weather than normal for this year. So think of think of this past year as dress rehearsal. We're going to have more of the same. All right. Open flame at the bottom is what Josh is saying. Check the manual. I see you can read the entire manual while we're. While we're I mean, I could. Really yeah, that'll make for a really interesting manuals. video. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see here. Ta ta. Yeah. And then I sold them. Yeah. I'm completely and totally disorganized with my seed storage. I've got seeds that I've just collected that I haven't put away yet, processed or done anything with they're with yet. Bags. They're they're still they're still in plastic baggies baggies, which is a no no for storage. But that's only because I put them in the plastic baggie while I was collecting them, and they're going to go into they're going to go on that's paper for long term storage. In my backpack. Also, need like, to do some stratification and some other things with these right. seeds. That, I may as well show you the seeds I got. Let me see. And here. where we got them from? Oi, 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 oi. He's got a lot of footage. So, a lot of footage. I'm not going to show you that one yet because I hadn't anticipated getting it. No, I hadn't anticipated. That's why I, was one bag I wasn't. Short. I wasn't planning on getting it. I wasn't planning on getting that one at all. Oh. It was. It was. It was a bonus. I, we we came across track. it. Yeah. All right. So we'll have we'll have a video coming out pretty soon where I show you what we did, where we got the seeds, how we got them, and everything else. Oh. But we took a trip up to the wilderness area nearby here and took a hike uh, for about two miles in. And one of the things I wanted to get a hold of were these Passiflora incarnata, growing wild here in Oklahoma. We have we have them growing wild. So these are native, naturally wild growing passion flower with their fruit. It's right in here, which as it turns out, dries out fairly well. Uh, the, the white matter on the inside of the pod, still sweet and still good. But I picked these for the seeds so I can have grown from seed passion flower. So we're, we're gonna do a video on processing those soon. We picked up a lot, a lot, a lot of mullen. Lots and lots of mullen. So we'll be processing that. I think I can see a bunch of those seeds already gathering right down there at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that close to the camera. Bunch of mullen seeds right there, just already coming out of those. So that's good. These need to be stratified. So we'll be taking them and we'll be spreading them out in a, in a tray with a little bit of moistened peat moss and put them in the freezer for a bit. To force them through a, through a winter cycle. That way they'll germinate whenever spring comes around. What else we have? I picked up what I hope, I hope is purple milkweed, Asclepius. And yeah, gathering the seeds down here. I, I gathered from two locations one that I'm pretty sure was the right spot, and the other one that I'm almost certain was the right spot. I'll have to compare some of the photos from earlier in the spring whenever we did our last trek up the mountain and then compare them to where I picked these other seeds up to make sure that was indeed the purple milkweed, and not just the regular common orange, because they have both of them growing up there on the hill. Anyway, got our milkweeds, okay, and we'll be processing those. I was going to get cuttings from this particular plant. It's a variety of Rus, 
but this one is the staghorn shumac, and these are the berries that I was talking about. If you saw the, the seven layer food forest video, and I pointed out, let me see if I can get, get these for the camera. Can. I'm actually just going to go ahead and open them. Yes. We're not going to store it this way. No, 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 no. These, these were just when I was gathering. All right, so there's. I got those because that was the only thing I could get to without going to the thorns. <laughs> well, I was going to collect the mullein. Mary, Mary went up and picked these 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 staghorn shumac berries. I was going to try starting the shumac from from cuttings, but she went ahead and gathered the the ripened berries. And even though they're they're ripe and they're dry, and they're ready to, I think probably stratify. I'll have to double check. Uh, they still have that citrus coating on the outside because they're a citrus on. Makes them taste like lemonade. Really interesting plant. Staghorn shumic. Yes, it did. It tastes like lemonade. I, I tell you, it does. It just needs a little bit of sugar. That's all. But the other interesting thing about staghorn, which I really want to show you guys, whenever I get some growing, I didn't want to take out the, uh, I didn't want to take out the the hori hori knife while I was out there on the hill and cut off a piece because. You know, it's not mine. I can get away with gathering seeds. That's fine, but but damaging the plants probably would not be uh, would not be smiled upon. I think. But uh, staghorn shumac has a really pithy inside the the branch, so all you have to do is pass a hot poker or something through the center, and you have and you have a a pipe, a piece of wood that forms a pipe, which allows you to do fun things. All right. Like. Um, I can something uh, where is that board? Did I lose it? Mm -hmm. I keep losing stuff. Now I, have I saw it. <laughs> All right. Oh, I know where it is. You know where it is? Oh. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. It's just, it don't, you, you, don't, you don't have to go get it right now. Um, I'll be taking some of our some of our bottle guards, or cal calabash, and using the staghorn shumac, beeswax if I can find some, or I might use pine sap depending whether or not I can find the beeswax or not. Some basic cordage, sand and charcoal, and making a water filter <laughs> using a calabash and staghorn shumac and a couple other things that you can find out there in the wilderness. That'll be fun, actually, being able to, to take just the raw materials out of nature and build something that you can use as a, as a water filter. 100% free, guys. It's free. Well, you got to have a source of staghorn shumac and Bottle board to make one like that. But. Yeah. I have a question for you. What do you have a question about? It's a methane compost burner. Is that the one thing that those off critters use? It's like a giant bag and they throw rot stuff in there? A digester? Uh, like there's a I digester bag? Um, like uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to this. Uh, John said you can get a regular full propane thing. Where's the trash bag? I forgot what that was. Or unless the comment. <laughs> I, I have a hard time it? keeping up with wait, this. I keep forgetting left, right, it's opposite. It's the right, it's opposite. The bookshelves are here. Bug just crawled your box. Uh, well, yeah. They do that. As, as previously mentioned, I need to shut the house down, take the cat out. And, um, <laughs> and 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 bomb the house whenever no matter the temperature actually drops and the insects come inside, we're going to break out the poison <laughs> and just kill them. All right. Somebody was asking a question. Let me see if I can find this. I'm sorry, was I've been trying to keep up with people. Uh, All right. Oh, it drops to say heavy drapes are good too. Yeah, heavy drapes are awesome. There's a reason why they have tapestry in old castles. It's because I they leak, they're drafty, and the tapestry gives you a little air ba air barrier. We new ones, and then we need real curtains in the bedroom. Automatic shut off for CO two and knock it over. That's cool. Red says, "Tea and mint wine, not even aged, and it's quite something." I might try that one of these days. Hmm. I think he's going to have to figure out how to use the thumb drive before the iPad runs out of storage. I'm sure you figure it out. Not too complicated. 
drop says, use the big buddy heater for last winter when the power went out for eight hours at night. I guess Lies. you want to use your little buddy heater and your different size propane tanks to figure out how long that'll last you for. And your generator, run it and find out how long a tank of, mm -hmm. you have, how long that gas will, rent, will last you. You have a diesel heater, whatever. All right. All right. Chris was asking, anybody can answer this. I don't know the answer to this question. So, uh, can you can I put a wet arm on the propane tank? Is there a way to fill small propane tanks like the buddy safely, like a regulator or something? I think Drops was talking about a, a way that you could use the use a big tank to fill the smaller tanks, and he probably knows the specifics about that. If you Drops, if you could tell him what you need to get, or just point him in the right direction. I'll have to check out that information too. Um, hang on a second. I was getting distracted. You asked me a question. I'm going to get to it as soon as I cover oh, this next thing. Yeah. I have another question All right. For you so too. the other the other thing that we got while we were up the hill that I hadn't anticipated getting. I know I kind of want to have it eventually because we're going to be putting in ponds. I've already got one water feature, and I could probably put these in you that one yet? water feature. Um, I have not released that video yet. On your keyboard water feature? Oh, that one. Yes, I have. Yeah. Cattails. Yeah. Going to see when we went up the hill. So it's, as it turns out. Every plant that we were going after, every single plant that we were going after that, that, that I'd noted when we made our trip earlier in the year, oh, all the plants that we that we pointed there. out that we wanted to get seeds from, we got seeds from, and we got cattail seeds too. So it was a good trip, good trip. All right, now you were asking about what? Methane compost burner? Methane compost That's burner. It? Okay. I, 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 know that, I know that there's, a, there's an, item, an item called a digester. Oh, where you, where you, it's, it's like a big bag, a heavy duty bag oh, that's got the hose, hose coming out the one end where it, it can attach to your burners, like a propane burner, a gas burner. And you open it up and you put your, your compostables in there, seal it up, and it produces methane inside the bag. And that comes out and that can be used to, to power your, 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 your cook stove or whatever, whatever else you need. Um, if you guys know of a guy named Rob Greenfield, Rob Greenfield did uh, one year of growing all of his own food in Florida. And behind the little shack that he had, that he'd set up in, in somebody's backyard where he was doing that, um, he, it wasn't just one yard. He, he did like seven different yards. So he volunteered to go around to people's houses and grow a garden in their yard. And he took a portion of the harvest for himself. So he was able to, to produce not only all, all of his food, but quite a bit for a few other people too, by just growing in the yards and living in a shed in the oh, back Florida. of somebody's property. It's in Florida, you know, it's it's easier, closer to the tropics to grow more food, but yes, it can be done. And he was using that digester for, for cooking with, that looked uh, it looked pretty cool, but I don't have any personal experience with them. But those videos are really, really cool to, to go check out. All right. Mm -hmm. And there was another one I was gonna ask you, I think Gail was asking about, oh, how do you, okay, a uh, caterpillar question, because you're going to have to deal with this. What? Okay. What caterpillar question? How do you prevent caterpillars for next year, too? A little late for this year, but, okay, like, we have to deal with the caterpillars that go up in the trees. All right. Maybe that's it? Bagworms? Are you talking about 10 caterpillars? Yeah, webworms? Yeah, caterpillars, because, oh my gosh. Because we're, we're talking about webworms. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. And you have to get around to it. Poison. <laughs> You can use poison, <laughs> uh, or you can climb up there and cut the affected areas out, um, or you can use a burner, like a propane torch, and burn the affected areas out. Just don't go and burn them on a high day or whenever all your leaves have already died. You'll start a forest fire. Uh, so if you're worried about that, cutting up, cutting them out will work. Just make sure you thoroughly dispose of all the webs and everything, and don't let them fall to the ground. Get them out of the trees before they fall because that's whenever they they, yeah, they spread true. and they multiply. Um, and I I I, I oh, investigate squash. oh squash caterpillars. Why oh. caterpillars on my squash? I don't use poison. Uh, try some try some try some uh, diluted water and dish detergent as as a non poison alternative. Japanese it's, it's either that or you have to go pick them out or encourage the <laughs> encourage the uh, the predator animals insects and birds and Aww. frogs and lizards and everything else to be heavily populated in your garden so that they will take care of most of the problem 
Uh, keep in mind, most of the time, whenever insects are attacking your plants, it's because they're just helping to move them on to their senescence to make room for the next thing, usually. But whenever you have infestations, you gotta, you gotta take extreme measures. Once again, the more diversity you have going, the more protection you have against pests. All right, I thought you were talking about those webworms that I still need to get after before the neighbor complains. Again, again, <laughs> He's yeah. like, you need to get rid of those webworms. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You need to get rid of those webworms. Yeah, I know, I know. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Uh, I was hoping this year that the, that the abundance of birds that I was attracting would help with the webworm population. Nuthatches hatches do seem to be interested in attacking the webs, but unfortunately the webs defeated the nut hatches. So they tried. <laughs> they tried to help me out with my webworm issue, but they, they failed, unfortunately. All right. Vicky says, my seed collection has emphasized variety, not commercial quantity, and it is various. Good. The more different stuff you can get, the better off you are. One of those little Mr. Buddy heaters and two of the big Buddy heaters which has two burners. Ah. Okay. And John said you can get a regulator to fill big propane tanks from the small ones. And there's Gail. I know I saw Gail. I know I saw Gail. They killed your squash, all of it. Oh my goodness. Um, are they on the squash or are they in the vine? Yeah. Gail. Is is this a small white grub inside the vine on your squash? Because that's, that's the different important. that's a different story entirely. Oh, one of the vine borers into the vine. The vine the, 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 the little worm is a vine borer and it's, it's from a moth called the vine borer moth. Oh. You know what else can attack your squash? Drop says Captain Jack's dead bug brew. If you guys are not familiar with this one, it's gross. It is gross. I gotta warn you ahead of time. So plug your ears if you you can't handle hearing something gross. Uh, what Drops is talking about is you take you take the insects that are the problem. You pick them off, you throw them in a jar. Pick them off, throw them in a jar. Pick them off, throw them in a jar. And once you've got them in the jar, mash them up, add some water, put the lid on it, shake it up, let it ferment for a few days That's until it gets good and stinky, and then put it in a spray bottle and spray it on your plants. Oh, because you want to make sure you wash your plants thoroughly <laughs> before you eat them after this. But the smell of the <laughs> decaying insects will drive the other insects away. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a good insect deterrent. Oh, here we go. They were on the leaves, white and fuzzy. White and fuzzy, okay. So that's not, that's not, that's not the, uh, the vine borer. That's, that's a different kind of, a different kind of, of caterpillar. Hmm. Yeah, short of, short of poison, uh, dish detergent and water. Captain Jack's dead bug brew, of course. That's, that's pretty good. Diatomaceous earth. Maybe, possibly. Those are soft bodied insects, caterpillars are. So getting slashed up by little tiny chunks of silica might not be good for them. Uh, and then of course, you know, more diversity. Don't have don't don't have all your squashes planted in one area spread. You have a squash here. And then have something else. Put another squash over here. That way if you do get an area that gets infested, the bugs can't just go from one plant to the next to the next to the next until they've eaten everything. Oh, there's a short video on how to do that first. Maybe we can figure it out what kind of things. I've seen some squash. I'm not really a gardener. I have no clue what half this you guys are talking about. Yeah, so fortunately, you got a lot of squash before this yeah. happened. Oh, okay. You know, like I was saying, later, as you come to the end of the plant's life cycle, this is when the insects come in and they start devouring. I've, I've, I've got the, the gorge, the, the calabash up there on the porch that are starting to get some powdery mildew on them. I'm not the least bit concerned about because they've already produced. Yeah. yeah. And now, now that mildew is just coming along and breaking the plant down, getting rid of it to make room for the next whatever I'm going to grow there. I don't know much about gardening. <laughs> Vicky's been answering most of the questions. Vicky's, I, Vicky's, I Vicky's some answering some questions about not weed, not weed with pigs. Something about Japanese knot. Or, the knot weed, yeah. That, okay. Yeah, we don't have that. We don't have that problem, fortunately. But it sounds like. Kind of like a wisp, the way it just grows like crazy. And then there's runners. Drop said, and there's flowers. did four three sister plantings. What's that? Huh? What's that? Four three sister plantings. Oh, oh. The, the three sisters concept, which is, you know, the, the something is a ground cover, and then something as a, as a tall plant that, that ashes a trellis, and then something that can climb up the, 
the tall plant that you trellis. It doesn't have to be corn, beans, and squash. It's anything that falls into that category. It lets you put three things stacked on top of each other so you can maximize your growing space. Pretty clever. Pretty clever. But the reason the natives were doing that, the, the indigenous North Americans were, were planning like that, was not because of, of, of the cleverness of stacking three things on top of each other. They did it because these are all crops that you can grow that keep without refrigeration or special preparation. They're all storage crops. So you see them, all of them are getting planted together. That's why. That's why they planted together. Oh, drops is saying sunflowers work better than corn. Yeah, especially the big ones, the mammoth ones. Um, mm -hmm. Next door neighbor was growing uh, was growing the mammoth sunflowers, and I had given him uh, some of the black eyed peas that I grew from the Can I Plant That video last year. And some of them were developing into vines, indeterminate vines, and just producing large quantities of you know 14, yeah. 15, or 16 or more yeah. peas per pod on the vine and they were just growing up those the sunflowers they didn't choke out the sunflowers at all the sunflowers loved it well they didn't hate it nobody asked them. <laughs> i guess nobody asked them but but the the black eyed peas grew in that space the exact same space as the sunflowers and they did great so obviously i had to swipe some of those seeds back from them because yeah, <laughs> they were awesome. they were they were nice indeterminate vining instead of bushing black eyed peas and that's what i want to try out with my corn for my, my late season planting of corn this next year. I might try uh, the Cherokee Trail of Tears black bean for early corn planting. And then for the, the late season corn planting, if I do two plantings of corn, I'll use the, the cow peas, the black eyed peas. This particular variety that I've isolated manages to grow into an indeterminate vine. So I should have a large volume of legumes in addition to the, the corn. Both of them are great for storage. Did you mention what you're not planting? Oh, yeah. Well, are you going to save that for a video? Mm, I mean, I've mentioned it before. I, I, I'm mm -hmm. kind of putting a damper on my root crop growing. If I do grow root crops for a while, uh, I will be using a special method to keep the gophers away from them because right now I'm just feeding gophers left and right. Uh, there are gopher holes and tunnels all over the place. Uh, when I was working on that, uh, Mm, what do I want to call it? The water feature the, with, the, with the cement blocks. It's kind of like a swale, but designed so that you can have it in a front yard and the, the neighbors won't complain. Um, <laughs> Larry. <laughs> Larry thought it was cool. He had to sell it on him. Well, once he figured out what I was doing, he's like, oh, wow, that's neat. Yeah. But anyway, um, where was I? Uh, what did you mean? Well, you're not planting. Well, I'm not planting. Oh, oh yes. While I was while I was excavating for for that for that little water feature, I was cutting through the clay blocks, which I took the breaker bar and drove it down to the ground and wiggle it back and forth to make a split. And then we just lifted those out. Sometimes I broke them out so I could actually lift them because they were more than forty pounds each. Hauled the chunks of of solid clay out and put them in the wheelbarrow and carted it off. It really is when you have enough sand mixed in with that builder's clay, it is like a, a crude concrete, kind of crumbly, but it's lousy stuff. Plants don't want to grow in it. But it turned out that the gophers were digging through it. So they had this area that was nice and stable and dry where they could live because the rain falls on it. It doesn't penetrate into it. It just sheds off. So all the soil below that where the, where the groundhogs had their dens were nice and dry. So I'm digging through and I hit these groundhog holes through there. And while I was working on it, one of them came, not groundhog, uh, gopher holes. While I, was, while I was doing it, one of the gophers came, he stuck his nose out. And I did not have the camera running at the time, unfortunately. I was, I was looking, I was like, hey, Sergeant, Sergeant Kitty, come over here, come over here. Catch this gopher. And he, he didn't pay attention to me. That cat's too old to care anymore. He, he, he's, he's, he's just settling for the food that I feed him now, I think. He's, he's retired. <laughs> All right, Gail is asking, what is yeah. determinate and indeterminate? Very good question. Thank you. Okay, so growth habits, growth habits of certain plants that we have indeterminate and determinate growth habits. I, well, Mary has already answered it right there. She said, I think indeterminate just keeps growing until frost. That's that is that. That's indeterminate. It doesn't set fruit once and it's done. Determinate set fruit once and they're done. Indeterminates keep on producing until something causes them to die usually frost in, in our case. For example, the, 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 the red brandy wine tomatoes that I've got growing in the seven layer food forest, still growing, still producing flowers, and probably we'll get some more fruit off of it before the year's over. 
and then and, and you, you, you treat them differently when you trim them. So I think somebody has said they do this for their tomatoes than what you were doing, and you think it's because they have determinate, determinate tomatoes, mm -hmm. like the indeterminate, just take over like a weed well, tomatoes. Yeah, because I, I well, I prefer to go out to the garden, pick the fruit, and eat it right there. Okay. And if, if I had determinants, well, I would have a whole true. bunch of tomatoes coming on all at once, and I'd have to figure out what I'm going to do with all these tomatoes. But if they're indeterminate, okay. then as long as the growing season is on, I can reach up there, get a tomato, and seeds on the ground, and we have more tomatoes. I, I, I like to go through, whenever whenever it's spring and summer and all the way into fall, that's that's the way I eat. I walk into my garden, and I eat. That's my dinner. I'm always trying to find something flowering and fruiting like all the time. All the time. It's a perennial. Preferably perennial. I mean, the tomatoes aren't perennials, but. I always check in the flowers in the wild. Hmm, but I do that? have some tomatoes that do like to volunteer themselves. I miss what I dropped Let's that one. Let's see. And drops covered it, too. Um, oh, yeah, I think so. Long, violent like pole beans, which turns like a bush bean. Well, it, it has more to do with the, the way they bear. You can grow a long vine that only bears once per year, but the the, the indeterminate the indeterminates will keep on. They're essentially ever bearing, and they keep on bearing until until they're killed. Why right. do you say that instead of determine or indeterminate? Because I'm thinking, which feature are we talking about? The growing, the fruiting, the flowering. What else does plants do? Seed seeding. Because there are the the scientists that 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 classify plants according to taxonomy, and then there are the the uh, the people that are trying to market a plant, and sometimes the, the marketing word works better or, or, or tests better for the for the public audience than, than the scientific word. So you wind up getting terms used interchangeably. So, yeah, so a lot of time we'll go to Lowe's or some other place if you can't name, oh, Atwood, mm. and you'll, you'll look at, something will say, uh, what was it? Blueberries, for example, or mm. I think a raspberry. And you're like, but what kind? What kind? You're not going to tell tell me exactly which species uh, or subcultivar this is. It's just here is a blueberry. Okay, thanks. Here's a fig tree. Thanks. I got the fig tree. I was like, you're selling it here in Oklahoma. I assume it can grow in Oklahoma. We get it home, we plant it. It grows really well, and then the frost hits and it dies back down to the roots. Like, well, I guess that's a part. We should double check. That and we started doing things. Yeah, we started doing things trying to to keep our our figs alive. The ones that we got from the box store. Um, the, the, the last the last attempt that we made involved uh, wrapping it heavy with burlap and then oh. wrapping plastic around that black plastic so it keeps the heat in. And then we piled up mulch all around it and that they still is. died off all the way down to the roots. Now, after that, you moved it south, right? Then yeah, then I moved those to to, to the southern side. No, they haven't been yet? through. They haven't been through a winter yet there. Nope, so we'll see. Good. We'll see. But the ones that the ones that Lisa brought by. Yeah. Those have been out in an exposed location year after year, and they produce fruit year after year. So, I'm thinking that's that's a good bet for people who are in the in the plains, high plains, and uh, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Kansas area, and you want a fig that can survive the winter. If these do what Lisa says they are going to do, then I might have some of those available for you, or she might have some because she's got access to the the whole tree that they came out of. At the yeah, moment, that's not the whole thing. and I believe Lisa like, is planning car. on getting <laughs> getting getting a little nursery started up. I think she says she's wanting to specialize in succulents, which would be great. We won't be stepping on each other's toes at all with that, because the only succulent yeah, I really have enough for it. Uh, yeah, really. The world needs more trees. Yeah. More plants. The only succulent I really grow is the aloe. If I don't kill it, if I don't kill it, or if Mary, or if Mary it. doesn't kill it. Yeah. Look at this! Whoops! Everybody's like, no. FHL says we had gophers and groundhogs that dug under the shed. And now the shed is not level. Yeah, they went. They went under the. Um, they went under the, the the foundation that I laid for my uh, for my reserve water tank. I've got a 300 gallon tank up under the carport wow. that I can I can pump water from our well into. The dog so, went halfway into one of the holes. Really? To pull her out. They bite her tail. She's wow. stuck. She's out so, uh, of medium. But Right. Smallish medium size dog, forty pounds. Right for 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 a backup water source. If if all else fails, I've got a, a manual cast iron hand pump that a hose can connect to, with a sediment filter in line with that. You put the other ends into the top of that three hundred gallon tank and pump 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 pump. You know you're pumping whenever uh, it's cool out and you've got a tank full of water that you can now 
use as running water to do your irrigation with a garden hose or you know, go ahead and run through an additional filtration and, and sanitation cycle so you can use it for potable water indoors, however you want to use it. And that concrete footer that the groundhog dug underneath all the way through and then out underneath the foundation to the carport. So there's this great big gaping hole underneath that. And now we're just trying to pack dirt under there and now the groundhog's out of there and hoping it doesn't collapse before um, before it, it can be properly compacted. And then there's the shed. So, yeah. And then 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 the <laughs> yeah, then the shed. The shed's got four or five gopher holes going out from either side of it. If it doesn't fall directly down into the ground at some point, I'll be surprised. Oh, <laughs> Vicky's saying pole beans, especially those those dried for use, are best for three sisters. Yeah. You can sharpen a snow shovel? What? Yeah. Of course, I you can sharpen a snow shovel. It's, it's, it's met this big white metal shovel. I have a little aluminum one that I, I had a. The handles on. That's not a, not a shovel. That's a toy. It works. I have really uh, got stuck on uh, swab tailing. <laughs> I made a corner too tight. I went over a snowbank. I can drag a trailer through a snowbank usually, but then my drive tires are just up, up like this. I only have like. Oh wow. It. So I was on a little, yep. little tiny, little bit of snow, just barely, and just rock the track. Boop, right off. Oh, I saved my bacon because. Pete's little home says coming in late. Says hello. All right, Pete. He was sick. Hang on. Oh, can you read that? Oh, Jason's I, got an almanac. I, 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 I've, been, I've been reading here in the almanac. <laughs> We've got, let me let me get to it. we got uh, we got the skinny on what kind of winter you guys can expect. Pete, you are here. <laughs> I'm not going to tell everybody where you're at. You can tell everybody where you're at if you want to. I'll just say Pete is also in the Ohio Valley area, generally speaking. That's a very broad area, so I'm not just telling exactly where he's at. Here's the summary. Winter will be colder than normal this year, Pete, with below normal precipitation, but above normal snowfall, especially in the West. So you know what you're in for. Coldest periods will occur in mid to late November and through much of the period from mid-December through January. The snowiest periods will arrive in mid-December, early and mid-January, and mid to late February. April and May will be much warmer, warmer than normal. No complaints there, really. We could always use a little bit. Well, I don't know. If you're counting on, on a long, cool season, you may not get it for spring. Uh, below normal precipitation, so save your, save your water over winter if you got it. Summer will be slightly cooler and drier than normal in the east, the eastern part of where you're at. All right. And uh, above normal temperatures and rainfall in the west. So Conrad, um, Paul at Conrad Homestead, whenever we watch this on replay. That's you guys. Hottest periods will be late June, early to mid July, and early August. September and October will be warmer than normal with normal precipitation. There we go. Yes. Is it Indiana, Ohio? The... But of course, you can always go buy your own almanac. Or, <laughs> or look it up online. All right. Let's see. Oh, Eric is asking if we've ever grown the Asian yard long beans. I haven't. I've seen them grown. I, I don't know. What I saw was them being used kind of like a green bean. And uh, this is one of the reasons I'm not incredibly interested in it because I personally don't really care for green beans that much. I know it's just horrible. I mean, I, I eat them, but they're not my, they're not, not my favorite go-to vegetable. He says, been sick for a little while. Uh -oh, you're getting better. That's good. There's Jeff, the Gypsy and Vanilla Grill, sharpening your snow shovels. Ah, that was that that was the that was, like, that, was that was the comment about sharpening your snow shovels. Yeah. You have the carrots and coal ready. I've got the carrots planted, by the way. I've already got I've already got some some carrots in the ground. Well, they're I planted them in you know that little water feature, right? The little, little tiny holes at the top. I planted that up with carrots, bok choy, celery, and broccoli rob. So I've got those growing there, and the gophers can't get to my carrots. <laughs> They're the half long, so those 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 chambers are about eight inches deep. So that carrot's going to be maybe four to six inches whenever I pull it up, like a little baby carrot. So they should be fine. 
what would you say the new little book? Um, Michigan, so you got Michigan, and then you got Indiana and Ohio. There's that corner right there, the Ohio side. Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio on the Ohio side. There's there's Michigan, there's Indiana, Ohio. I didn't talk about that area, no. I think I figured out where they are. No, oh, no, no, no. So if you're, if you're, what is this? If you're just on the south side of the Great Lakes, lower lakes is what they call it, they're saying winter will be colder and drier than normal out there. Lovely, it lovely. Might less blowing snow. Less blowing snow. Oh, yeah. Got it. Yep, yep, yep. We get blowing sideways rain. They get sideways blowing snow. If you both are just cold. Vicky is saying majority. some kind of figs okay. die to the ground and regrow and fruit the next year. Best to mulch them well. Okay. Well, they always um, regrow, but they never get. They've given us figs a couple of times. I think one that I know of. Let me ask you. Uh, drops used to pew pew groundhogs all the time in Montana. Ranchers love love to let you do it. All right. Every time I got to the point where I got a good line of sight on one, they were they were gone. But by the time I was able to do anything, I even went out and I got a um, a new um, a new Ruger air rifle and and outfitted it for some precision shooting with heavyweight ammunition. And um, <laughs> by the time I had that set up and I, I was able to able to hit a dime at fifty yards with it, the ground logs had moved on. I guess they, they knew what I was planning. Or Dudley got them. Yeah, next door neighbor's dog got a couple. He's like a keg on legs. I made the video. I just never posted it because you know how people yes, get. Is. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes like people just don't like it whenever you show show fun little toys like that. <clears throat> Pete said Northeast, Northeast Kentucky. I know. <laughs> It's talking about GMO makes more seeds that aren't fertile. Yeah. Uh, okay. West Ohio, Northwest is where, <laughs> where Jeff's at. Let's see. Western Ohio, Northwest. Okay, that's lower low, lower lakes region that we were just talking about. So colder and drier than normal. Just about everybody is getting colder than dry, colder and drier than normal, except for for, for for the people in the high plains. I guess they're getting a little bit warmer. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Which which is going to be some interesting jet stream perambulations going on for this winter, I suppose. Extra parking. Like How is the Northeast Pennsylvania doing this winter? Okay, let's take a look. Oh, Pennsylvania is uh, that's where that's where my daughter and uh, and Ginger, the baby mama, are. Let's see, Pennsylvania. You always be your daddy's baby. Yeah. <laughs> depending <laughs> upon where you are, <laughs> depending upon where you are. Okay, let's Pennsylvania North and East. Okay, North and East is here. That would include. Of course, Dunbar, because we're talking about the Appalachians here. Oh, or Appalachians. In Appalachia, winter will be colder and drier than normal. There you go. Uh, near normal snowfall. The coldest periods are going to be early, mid, and late December. So, hey, you're going to be able to get your your uh, your fall cool season crops out. Congratulations. Uh, much of January and early and mid February are going to be are going to be cold. The snowiest periods will be in early December and early January and mid February. Oh, so you're going to be buried for a while. <laughs> April, May will be warmer and drier than normal. So save your water from winter. You're going to need it. Uh, with an early hot spell, early to mid-May. So early, early season potatoes may not make out unless you've got something that grows really quick. Because potatoes after it hits 80 degrees die or they stop producing. Depending. Uh, summer will be hotter and drier than normal with the hottest periods in early to mid to late August, early and mid to late. That's all month long. Why did they write it that way? <laughs> August, just August is going to be the hottest period. September and October will bring near normal temperatures and be rainier than normal. So it'll it'll cool off whenever September gets there. So you'll have time to, to get some cool season stuff going. There we go. 
Of course, Mel, that's you too, I think. If Mel watches on, on the replay. All right. Jeff uses the kids to remove the snow. Uh, let's see. Oh, and Tammy has that. carrots out still. Nice, nice, nice. I think 30 out six would be overkill for groundhogs. Maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. But of course, you can, you can get just about any kind of game in North America with a 30 out six, including elk and moose and grizzly bear. <laughs> Jeff says it's the weather here every year. Right. And yeah, the high, the, uh, the high plains this year, all of you guys in the, the Western Plains areas, you're, you're, you're going to get some drought. So more of the same, more, more of the great drying out. So figure out ways you can capture your water and hold on to it whenever you get it. FHL says, thank you. Don't like the coal. Planning on selling and if anyone's interested in moving south. Mm -hmm. I don't like to be much further north than I am right now, actually. It's, I, I mean, I don't like the hot period of the, of, of the summer. I really don't. I'd like to have a nice cave and be underground and be nice and cool. <laughs> but uh, old joints don't handle the cold very well. Even with the, even with the turmeric and black pepper and and Indian frankincense and, and Epimedia brevio, Breviosa and and uh, cinnamon and what else do I have in there? Mm. Even with all those nice anti-inflammatories, cayenne, no, I didn't add any cayenne pepper. Even with all the nice anti-inflammatories that I can, I can feed to myself to help alleviate, I didn't mention that one. Yeah. Even with all the nice anti-inflammatories I can feed to myself, it still gets rough. And then you have to remember to take them every now and then. Sometimes you're just like, oh, mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Inflammation in the hip hitches the sciatic nerve, and it just gets, some days I can't walk if it gets bad. Yeah. Hmm. I was teasing him. Is the Jew in you? Is this right from the Bible? <laughs> right. Hip. Vicky is saying, mulch, mulch, mulch to keep the ground cool. Most 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 to 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 keep the ground hydrated too. Yeah. Jeff likes the seasons and likes the cold too. See, there's a place for everyone out there. Turmeric. Yep. Turmeric with the black pepper for inflammation. FHL is saying. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep yep yep. We 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 made some capsules. When was that? Was last that last week? week? Was that last Wednesday? Yeah, we we made a. Just like a plate that was just full of capsules. Like, yeah. oh, Mary, you're sore. Take these. Take those. I've, I've, I've got the next door neighbor taking them, but he he mainly um... yeah never smoked because of Larry again. He likes the good stuff apparently. If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Red says I've got some tea wine. It's amazing. Okay, we're gonna we're we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. Uh -huh. I earlier, but I think I and a drop says been a member of the bathroom crawl. I had to do it before I could, before when I couldn't walk. I actually do keep a uh, one of those little four-legged canes next to my bed just in case because whenever it does happen, I usually don't know that's going to happen until the morning that I wake up, and then if I don't have somebody to uh, to help me, <laughs> and I'll be sitting oh, there going, "Oh no, <laughs> I can't get out of bed today," and that's no fun. And we've saved That's mom's no fun at all. walker for when he needs that. She yep. doesn't need more. She gets people to push her around. Jeff says, like our black pepper here. Black pepper is, is, is a wonderful spice, and it's unfortunate that those of us here in oh. zones 9 and north just oh. can't grow it unless we've got a, a greenhouse because it's, it's so good for so many different things. Oh, geez. Let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Red's talking. We're talking more about the tea wine. Brew it and then leave, leave it sit for a year. 
You know, I did some 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 apple cider like that. I, I brewed it up with a little bit of uh, ginger and cinnamon. I think I put into it, and it wasn't fantastic initially. But after it after it sat for at least six months, I cracked those open, and that was just some of the most heavenly cider I'd ever had. The 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 the, the complexity <laughs> of flavors and the way they they presented themselves to the palate was was very entrancing because you you got the initial sweet taste with a little bit of that. A little bit of that that tingly spice from the carbon dioxide that's in it, of course, it tingles a ton because it's effervescent. We primed it before we sealed it up, and then afterwards we got a little tartness from the, the from the apples, and a nice apple bouquet along with it. So it is sweet and then dry, a little dry tartness, and then the ginger kicked in with a little heat on the after end, and then we could feel the cinnamon. So it was like one flavor after another flavor after another flavor, and you just experience them one after each, after each other. And I've never been able to brew a batch quite like that ever again, <laughs> but I keep trying. I, I, I bought a whole lot more bottles just in case I get a batch like that. Oh, and we'll, yeah, with the, with the little, little, the Gulsh, little the the, they're, they're old, yeah, the old Grosch beer Gulsh tops beer, yes, with, yes. The, with the little, little uh, metal top that you could put a, a little rubber stopper on or leather seal if you can't get rubber anymore and then the wire that just pops up there and you can just put those away man oh man i've, I've, got, I've got enough for really a year's supply oh, if i God. if i ever brew a batch that i want to save that much of Let's see concord grape and yellow watermelon wine on ferment nice mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. We're going to be getting the cider press here one of these days pretty soon so we can press our pears. And he tells me what he wants for Christmas all <laughs> year long. I, I, well, Mary likes it when I brew wine, so there you go. Drop says, got a bad L4 and 5. Yeah, everybody's comparing. I was like, Seth Straightberry. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking to myself, those comments, like, oh, Seth Straightberry, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. Usually, usually oh. I get my information right in the there hip. in the hip right around the joint and it, it gets it gets that sciatic nerve there and that's 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 when i run into trouble i i rotated c6 when i was uh, in high school on the swim team i, I was diving and I, I didn't get my arms out in time and, and hit the water with my head and i wound up walking around like this for about three months until finally uh the chiropractor was able to, to slowly work that, that that vertebrae up so i could hold my head up right again so, but fortunately, I, I haven't had any any long term issues from that. It's just that that hip and fingers and knees and ankles and everything else. <laughs> I've been my knees now. I think I jump out of trailers too rough. Katie's taking off. Got to go. See you next week. Well, that's been a while. Take, take care, Katie. Yeah, we, we we've gone you're over. We've gone so, over an hour. You're so you're so behind on your comments. Slider. <laughs> That's cider. Cider. Oh, then they made a joke after that. Slider after cider. After cider. Pete says, made some apple a few years ago. It's four years old now. I'll well, knock your socks off. Hey, Pete, do you like to take your cider and put it outside during the winter? <laughs> because you can. And whenever it freezes, you can pour the liquid part off, put that back out there. And when it freezes, pour the liquid part off, put that back oh. out there. And when it freezes, pour the liquid part out, put that back out there. And keep on doing it until it doesn't the freeze anymore. Because the alcohol doesn't freeze. Oh. It's freeze distillation. You can concentrate it until it'll really knock your socks off oh, and make no. you go blind too. For that matter, if you drink enough, <laughs> Applejack is Applejack is pretty serious yeah, stuff. Yeah. Rob says I'd make a lousy used car salesman. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I would. I'd make a horrible used car salesman. Unless you actually want a used car. Well, yeah, because <laughs> I, I'd be most likely to tell you, well, this is what's wrong with it. And here's why I wouldn't buy it, but here's why it's a good deal. <laughs> then again, I might make a good used car salesman. Who knows? At least, at least whenever you bought one from me, you know what you were getting. <laughs> hey, we've been going for whew, over an hour and a half now, guys. I still and have to call about my truck. I've, I've, I've got to, um, I've got to get, I've got to get Mary delivered to the. Uh, 
the shop where she's supposed to be picking up a loaner truck so that she can get the load that she's supposed to be delivering delivered. It was supposed to be delivered last week, Saturday. Saturday but I because. Know, so I came home thinking, I'm going to take a day to change yep. out a compressor on an air conditioner. Oh, no, it's a national back order. Yep. But because supply chain issues are making it difficult to keep the trucks up and running, she's she's having to, 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 to use a, an alternate truck. And apparently those are in short supply, too. So. No, they're always short supply. They, only ever, they always want to keep trucks full. The loaners are the ones that nobody wants. So, all right, guys, I'm getting ready to sign off and just remind you once again, for most of us out there, it's going to be colder than normal this winter. So you got a month or so. Make your preparations now. Make sure you've got what you need. Plan ahead. Don't freeze. Take care. And I will catch you next time. Don't forget to winterize your vehicles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Winterize the vehicles.